When they went in, it was a lot worse than they thought. The labrum was 360 degree tear off the bone. I had some bone chunks broken off and no cartilage left. I ended up putting 10 anchors in my shoulder to, to pull it all together. So they literally made drills into my shoulder bone, set the anchors, and then put sutures to hold the labrum against my bone. All sorts of stuff. I thought I was tough and I could handle the pain and I could manage it. I did get through training every single day. I'm in a lot of pain, but I made it happen. Turns out my shoulder probably would have fallen apart by the time we even got to the World Cup. It took me about five months to make the decision to actually have surgery. I was back and forth, back and forth. I got a lot of different opinions, a lot of different answers. But those were the hard days where I was kind of going through the ups and downs, emotional roller coaster. Once I finally put my foot down and I made the decision to have surgery, things looked brighter for me. I, uh, I had a great outlook. I had great support. I had, obviously, the coaching staff has been behind me. My teammates have been supportive. I have a newfound respect for my own body, my body's ability to push itself to the limit. You asked me what was the hardest part, and I said the decision to have surgery. The second hardest part was the first couple of weeks when I was on a lot of painkillers, a lot of drugs. Um, I was dependent on everybody around me to get dressed, to drive me to therapy, to get the game ready machine ready and ice me to do anything. I shower, wash my hair, I couldn't put my hair up. Everybody wanted to help and it was almost like I just wanted all my independence that I would snap at people and I wanted things done this way and that way and it was, it was horrible. And as an athlete, you know, you, you want to get out and work out and, and it relieves some of that stress and I couldn't even get on a bike. People told me I may or may not make it back. It's a very extensive surgery. It ends people's careers, especially, you know, baseball players, tennis players, any throwing sport. I have to be patient because I have no range of motion um, and the pain is incredible. For me, um, it was hard to be happy with those small moments. You, you can't get motivated by that because you think, if I can only move my arm two inches, how the hell am I going to make a save? Now I'm very happy with those small victories. You, you had to learn to do so. My first camp back, it was overwhelming. I broke down a couple of nights. I, I felt like I was making strides with therapy and my range of motion and my strength, but then I got to the field and I was like overwhelmed with everything I have to get back to being the best I can be. And that's not just diving, not just taking crosses, raising my arm, it's the footwork, it's the fitness, it's the kicking, it's the diving, it's everything to be the complete goalkeeper that I once was. We sat down that camp and we came up with a plan. Doctors, trainers, coaches, players, teammates, US soccer, everybody was on the same page to help me get through this. You hear of the horror stories, but Fortunately for me, I mean, my therapists have been amazing. Um, as I said, the coaches, the team helped me stay patient. The therapists have helped me stay patient and we've had goals and timelines and we've had a plan and I've just stayed true to the plan. I hate rehab. It's the most painful thing I've ever gone through. But I think I like the challenges and I knew all odds were against me and it almost gave me that inspiration, that fight, that, that drive to make it back. I feel great. I know there's going to be more ups and downs, I expect that, but I think this is going to be a great three weeks for me here in Portugal and there's a plan to stick to. It's the first week I'm hoping that I can take full pace shots from Paul and once I'm able to do that, the second week we can go into taking full pace shots with the team, which by the way is is very scary to think about. And then by the third week, we're hoping to get me into full-on playing, 4v4 four four games, um, full-on tackling. And then by the end of that, hopefully I can be cleared going into the England game. That's good. Push, push all the way. Good, relax. Hello. It's making noise today. She's coming along with her strength. Uh, she's coming along with a range of motion. She's now getting back into some soccer-specific activities and uh, everything's looking really, really good. Right now, it's mostly getting back played in, uh, getting used to seeing balls again and, and, and getting the, the proper form. 
She's done everything we've asked her to do. Um, obviously, we're going to ask her even more now. This trip already, what, three sessions? She's basically looks smoother in everything she does. She's not protecting the shoulder. She's not wincing as much when she lands on it. A couple of the dives yesterday, she winced a bit, which is expected. It's been difficult, but she's been professional enough to deal with it. I have to be honest that this process has been a very positive process, and I'm still hoping, you know, obviously we have, I have about probably a month six weeks left before I get cleared to play. So anything can still happen. We're hoping there's no setbacks. Um, but overall, the experience has been incredibly enlightening, positive. Um, it's given me confidence in myself, in my mental game, in my kind of psychology. So I think I have a good outlook on things and a new outlook on things. And so I think the hardest part was just making that decision.